Well, I, actually, I was born in Malaysia. I was a Ipoh boy, yeah. But of course, I went to study overseas, and then later I, I was an, an, an entrepreneur who started actually three company in Malaysia. Before eventually, I went to Singapore, and then I uh, became a professor in the university. But I've always had maintained this interest in entrepreneurship and venture investing. So about. Uh, you know, uh, 15 years ago, I started to do a bit of uh, angel investing, and then I started a business angel network, Service Asia, which sort of uh, really a platform to for angel investors to learn from one another, exchange best idea and practice. I got together uh, a several like-minded angel investor. We actually set up a uh, sort of uh, a public company limited by guarantees to provide a platform, you know? so me and several other angel investors together. And then uh, in 2010, we feel that as Asia is beginning to grow, uh, more we feel that there's a lot more angel investment opportunity and we need to also learn about cross-border investing. Because uh, Asia, as you know, South Asia is very fragmented, unlike China, US, a huge market. It started in around year 2000 in Singapore, we, that time, we began to have some individual angel investors doing investment and we kind of get to know a little bit one another. But we find that the scale activity is low and they, we don't have a platform to exchange ideas and to share deals. And also to provide a platform that can attract entrepreneurs to actually come to us. So that's why this is a way to jumpstart the whole uh, uh, business angel investment activities in Singapore. Cross-border activity, we actually try to encourage, uh, will be initially uh, amongst the Southeast Asian country. Like for example, I have organized a group of angel investors, you know, in Singapore through the platform, to go to China to meet with uh, angel investors there and to look at deals there. I've organized uh, such a visit to even to Penang, Malaysia, you know, to look at some, you know, uh, startup from Penang, and we have got uh, MDC, uh, MDEC, uh, to actually bring three or four of the of the your uh, multimedia super corridor startup to Singapore to pitch at our platform. So, so we do try to do this, but we decided that in order to push this further, we then started. I kind of started in 2010. Uh, the first Asian Business Angel Forum, the ABAF. Lah, okay? The ABAF was uh, initiated in Singapore in 2010. And the idea is to bring the various angel groups from around Asia to meet and get to know one another more. We want to focus on Asia because, like in Europe, there are already an organization called IBAN that organizes the European Business Angel Network where they bring all the angel groups from all the European countries every year. You know? And in US, they also have a such an annual event. They bring together the angel group of all the different states of US. So we feel in Asia, it's time for us to have a similar organization. So that's how we started it. And so the first one was in Singapore. Last year, it was in Shanghai. And this year, you know, we have it in Kuala Lumpur and hope that we can go on and to further, you know, build up this cross-border connection. Because before you can talk about cross-border investing, First, the angel investor must get to know one another more, right? Yes. Because angel investing is a very people business. I cannot call invest with someone in, you know, in some way I, I, I don't have a face-to-face -face contact and I'm not comfortable with before. Yeah. Well, we, I personally strongly supported having uh, this uh, ABAP 2012 in Kuala Lumpur as opposed to a number of competing locations like uh, Mumbai and so on. Partly I feel that maybe this is the right timing for Malaysia to start uh, getting uh, an angel community to be developed and we hope that maybe ABAP can, be, can contribute towards the, you know, the development of this angel community in Malaysia. I believe that uh, you know, the number of tech startup has grown and so this is the right timing to uh, accelerate this formation of the angel group. And so we hope to be able to help contribute to this. And frankly, we also think that uh, Malaysia is an interesting uh, place for us investors, even from Singapore or elsewhere in Asia, to look at. And so we also hope that through ABAF, we might actually be able to encourage some cross-border deal to actually happen that involve Malaysian startups. Well, I think first of all, 
the Malaysian government through through agency like Credo and MDEC and uh, VC fund like MapCap have over the year help the last few years are uh, help providers are needed funding to get this process going because the reality is that without this seeding at the earlier stage it will be harder for the uh, angel investors to find good deal and without having map, map cap and a number of other VC doing follow on it will be harder for the angel to really come in because remember the angel need to be sure that there are follow on investors yeah so i think therefore to some extent, the government had contributed to create the right conditions in the same way that uh, the development of the angel investment community in Singapore was partly also facilitated by Singapore government providing some, you know, seeding and support. So, therefore, I feel that this process should be continued and uh, also maybe Malaysian government should look into some of the policy schemes that have proven to be effective in uh, other countries in trying to uh, nurture and support the angel investment community. And so hopefully through this ABAP, we can have a sharing of some of the you know, policy that have been found to be effective in other countries. And maybe some of this can be adapted in Malaysia now. Well, I am not aware of any other G2G channel in which this issue has been discussed. So I, I would think so because my own experience in Singapore and also a uh, look at what has been done in other countries, actually it is the angel investment community itself must get together and then provide a platform and use it as a platform to have dialogue with the government and give feedback to the government as to which area needs support and provide a more transparent process by which policy can then be developed with, you know, with feedback and involvement of the community. If you don't have an official community, then, you know, the government may listen to one or two uh, and then, now, is it representative or not, right? So I think then this becomes a more transparent process. And that's why we found in Singapore that when we, when we set up Bansi, we were able to enjoy this because we are a platform with a good representation of a lot of the revenue, that the government be, is, is actually very receptive to having dialogue and feedback with us because we are able to bring a good cross-section of angel investors so that they feel that they are really getting the industry's voice and not just one or two person, you know, who may have their special grouses and so on. Yeah. Bansi has gone through a process and this may be something that you may want to uh, study and see how you can further improve. At the first stage when we started Bansi, we were trying to get as many people who are interested in angel investing to be involved. So, and I must admit that in that process of evangelizing it, we end up having going for quantity than quality, right? So get more people to be involved, including some who have some mild interest but really not very deep interest and, and including some who are not really doing angel investing but including broker and so on who want to, you know, be in uh, tap this network and so on. So initially, we were a little bit more looser in the welcoming party. Over time, we learned from there and now we are, uh, over the last few years, we become to focus more on professionalizations and we have uh, been more restrictive about membership that you have to be really more bona fide and also now we begin to start doing things like we collect quarterly information from our members what deals they have done so that we begin to generate some actual information about the deal and also over the year we have improved on the process by which we run our pitching events and so on so that now it become more professional. Uh, and in that sense, I think uh, perhaps in hindsight, you may have said that maybe we should have started off by focusing on being more professional. But I suppose this is part of the process of building up a community. Yeah. So maybe in Malaysia now, you could afford to perhaps uh, put in place a more professional community right from the beginning. Yeah. Bansi, as I said, okay, although we deliberately, when we set it up in Singapore, we wanted to be, have a Southeast Asian focus because we feel that a lot of uh, investors that, uh, that are based in Singapore actually are interested to invest in other Southeast Asian countries because it's our own uh, neighbours. But it's just that uh, we cannot do it as effectively if we do not have more, more active angel community in the, each of the ASEAN countries that we can network closely with. So exactly to our interest that there is a very strong Malaysian angel community 
Now our Bansi members who want to invest in Malaysia, they can easily find prospective core investor and partner. They can get deal referral and so on to us. So in a sense, we like to help catalyze more. Uh, you know, each of the country in ASEAN to have their own strong injured community that we can plug into. And so I hope that one of the goal of having this ABAB in KL is to help catalyze that and hopefully build a stronger links and tie between the injured investment community in Singapore and that in Malaysia in the first instant, although longer, you, know, you can have stronger tie with Chinese and other. And hopefully my short-term goal is that over the next two years, we begin to see more cross-border deal between Singapore and Malaysia. And in fact, just to uh, highlight that, we do see, for example, you see, if I wear my other hat at the National University of Singapore, I told you that I have an incubator that incubate yes. and invest in startup by our professor students, the alumni. Well, we have a fair number of our NUS students who are actually Malaysians. So when they graduated from NUS, they want to come and start company and they want to go back to Malaysia. And so, in fact, we have invested in some of these Malaysian startup company because we get to know them while they are in Singapore. So I believe that uh, you know, there have always been very close relationship between Malaysia and Singapore and if we can strengthen the link between the angel investment community in Malaysia and Singapore, I believe we will see more cross-border deal, not just Singaporean investors investing in Malaysia, but I believe also Malaysian investors investing in companies that are even started in Singapore. You know?